<laughs> so here we are, uh, back. Thanks for coming back after the break. Um, one of the things that was we talked about during the break was, and I'm just going to say it just briefly. Those of you that weren't able to be here, I'm sorry. You didn't get the long version. Here's the short version. And that is that God doesn't expect us to know everything. We just have to be willing to learn. There are things that I, that I believed 43 years ago when I first gave my life to Jesus that I don't believe now because I've learned. There are things that I was taught by good, well-meaning people. I, I, good people. I was my, and this isn't dogging any denomination. Everybody's got their issues. Everybody's got their problems, so this is not that at all. My family came to salvation because of a couple of little Baptist ladies. You know, they came knocking on our door one day and my dad and my mom, I didn't know this until later on in life, but I think my mom and dad, their relationship may not have been super great at that point. Neither one of them were Christians at that point. I remember mom putting us in the car and driving around town trying to find my dad because she was super skeptical, right? Um, and I don't think my dad ever did anything wrong. I just think she was skeptical. But that's the kind of, like, that dynamic, right? Dad was in, I think, Des Moines, Iowa, at meetings for the, his employer. These two ladies came knocking on the door, and they had the Four Spiritual Laws track. And they said, we're from this little Baptist church over here. Can we come in, and we'd like to read this little track to you? And my mom's like, what damage can two little Baptist ladies do, right? Everything. They destroyed everything. <laughs> We ended up, you know, listening to these two little Baptist ladies, and they just basically read the book. Flip the page, flip the page, and they just read. Everybody sins, flip the page. You can accept Jesus and get saved. Flip the page. Would you like to? And mom said, yes, I would. So she prays for salvation, sitting there on the, de- on the, on the desk, sitting there on the, uh, on the couch. This little Baptist church had done, sorry, this is where it's going to hit me. <laughs> I'm a big VBS component. I believe in VBS, Vacation Bible School for churches. My sister and I used to go over to this little Baptist church for Vacation Bible School because they had the best Kool-Aid and cookies. We did not go to VBS because of Jesus. We went to VBS because of the cookies and the Kool-Aid. And it was good stuff, man. And, you know, I, we get these little fun sugar cookies and we dip them in the Kool-Aid and they get kind of crunchy, soggy at the same time. Oh man, even thinking about them, that's good. <laughs> so we, we had this familiarity with the Baptist church because of their VBS program. And that was the reason my mom, that's the reason my mom later on felt comfortable inviting those two ladies in because one of those teachers one of those ladies happened to be one of my bible school, one of my sunday school teachers at the baptist church so mrs wedge and mrs drummond were the two women that came so they pray for my mom she starts to cry and gets saved i mean my mom got born again sitting on the couch in the living room with these two little helpless baptist ladies <laughs> And I remember Myrna looking at me, or Mrs. Wedge, one of them looked at me and said, do you understand what we said? And I remember saying, yes, I do, you know. And so fast forward about a week later, one of the things that they said during the time they were talking with my mom was, Jesus came to be a friend of the friendless. And I was the kid that got beat up in school all the time. I didn't have friends growing up. I was the one that constantly got beat up. And so I was really good at running. I knew where the alleys were, all that kind of stuff. So I was the runner. I, I was creative and high. I could hide in, I could hide really quietly in some pampas grass. I was good at that. Hated fighting. And, uh, and I remember laying in bed that night and I'm remembering what those women said. And I'm like, you know what, Jesus, those ladies said that you were a friend of the friendless and I really would love to have you as a friend. And, and I gave my life to the Lord that night. I remember feeling the Lord come into my life and I was laying in bed and I started crying and I was so overwhelmed at the Lord's presence. And my mom heard me and she came in and she said, sweetheart, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, mom, I prayed and I invited Jesus into my life. And she's like, okay, tomorrow morning, you've got to tell mom, dad and sis or it won't stick. And so I, I did the next morning and my dad couldn't even give him a rip at that point. He didn't care. My sister was like, whatever. So fast forward now, Mary and I are just married and it's the first year of our, of our marriage. We just had gotten married that summer. 
in VBS, these women were walking around our neighborhood inviting kids to VBS. Now, I'm, I, get mar I got married when I was 25 years old, and that was 12, so it's 13 years later now. So lady locks on the door, I open the door, and she goes, hi, I'm with Miller Baptist Church, and we're inviting all of the little kids in the area to come to Vacation Bible School. And I looked at her, and I said, well, tell me your name. She says, well, I'm Myrna Drummond, and I go, I started tearing up. <laughs> I said, you need to come in my house for a minute. Would you please come in and let me give you a glass of iced tea? I need to tell you a story. So she came in, and I'm like, and I started unraveling, un because I had not seen her since the day that she mm -hmm. told me about Jesus. And so, I, so I'm telling her, I'm like, you've got to understand, this is what you did. You messed up our family. You know, my mom got saved that day. She goes, oh, I remember that. Your mother was so sweet. She was so precious. And I remember she, that she was crying on the couch. And I, she said, I remember that. And I'm like, you know what? And I said, I gave my life to Jesus a week after that because of what you said. And I said, since then, I've led a number of people to Jesus. Some of the people I've led to Jesus are now pastors. I said, that one thing that you did has had this ongoing effect in lives. And it was the most wonderful time of sharing these experiences as believers, right? And I'm saying all that now to say this. I'm going to draw it to a point. We just finished with this massive reunion in front of God's throne. People that we have never seen, have never met, if we're living our lives the way that we're supposed to, we're going to get the chance to meet. And they're going to say, you know, when you told so-and-so that, they told me and this is what happened. That experience, that little tiny experience that I had with Myrna and what she did to our family changed the dynamics of my family line forever. Because of her coming to my house and telling me about the Lord, my kids now know Jesus and they've known him since they were young. And they're telling people about the Lord. My dad got saved. My mom was saved. I got saved within another month or two. My sister got saved. And within a few months after that, my dad was saved. Within six months, we all got born again. Within six months of one another. My entire family. My dad loves the Lord. My sister loves the Lord. They have their own faith. They're walking it out in their own way. We're all walking differently. But they know the Lord because of Verna Drummond. And these stories that we have that I shared you that are deep and dear to me... We're going to end up having those kinds of experiences, I believe, when we're all together and we're with the Lord. Now, we may not be doing it right at the moment we're seeing Jesus because I don't think we're going to be thinking about these things at the time we see him, right? The, the time that we're there worshiping, the time that we're there in God's presence, we're going to be overwhelmed by that. I think our focus is going to be the Father. But I can't help but believe in a city as big as the New Jerusalem. We're talking a city that's 1,400 square miles. 1,400 miles high, 1,400 miles square at the widest part at least. That's a big city. 1,400 miles, that's like from here to L.A., just shy of that. So pretty big-sized city. There's a lot of place for people to live. Scripture says there's golden streets. Jesus is the one that's constructing it. Everybody knows Jesus owns a building company, right? He said it. He said, I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come back and bring you where I'm at. There's a reason why Jesus was a carpenter on this earth. Just saying, that's what he's doing. So as we run into chapter 8, remember, you've got all of this going on. Massive conversations. Multitudes of people that nobody can name. People from the fifth seal at the throne of God that have been given white robes, that have died for their faith, that were responsible for spreading the gospel and the understanding of the scriptures. Now even the sixth seal added a, a, a number of people so great, the multitude, that we can't number them. There's so many. 